Good morning. So just on a morning walk, thought I'd jump on a video as this stems from two conversations over the last week. They're kind of interlinked. I thought I'd do them together, but they're kind of not. And it refers to one, comparing yourself to where you were during lockdown. And this, this come up yesterday with one of the ladies saying that she feels that when she's watching the sun rise in from her bed or it's getting lighter, morning Judith, that she should, so he uses words like I should, why am I not? Just put focus on those phrases for when you say them. Doing this, why am I not doing that? Forgetting that her life is totally different now, forgetting that her expectations of herself during lockdown were probably a bit higher than where they are now, where she's traveling a bit more again, working a bit more again. But going back to those, that language, when you say things like I should, why can't I? Consider that sometimes they're simply things that you think you should be doing, but don't actually value. Maybe you just can't see the value in them at this time. Not always, but sometimes you're just not either selling it to yourself, AKA what are actually the benefits of doing it? What do you actually get from doing it? Hey Susie, good morning. Secondly, it may actually be that you just don't value it at the moment. Actually, you value something else more. And that's okay, but it's better to be more honest with yourself than to beat yourself up for why you're not doing it. Now, if you have sold it to yourself, so aka you're like, right, I really need to do this because if I don't, my diabetes will get worse. My blood sugar levels will get out of whack. I won't be able to run around with the kids for much longer. Whatever the reason is, whether it's health related, the clothes you want to wear, whether it's just you just want that sense of achievement of doing something, whether you want to get fitter, but you're still not doing it, then you've got to consider, okay, how can I, how can I attach or how can I get a pattern interrupt and create an interrupt to my habits for those days where you want to go, you know, I've had a stressful day. I just want to sit down with a cuppa and a cake, eat my stress away. When you know that in an hour or so you're going to feel rubbish, but at that time you're starving, maybe you've been go, go, go all day because life's a bit different now that things have opened up again and your work is perhaps the same job, but just you've got four times the amount of things to do in that day that you used to find stressful anyway. Get that? So how can you create that pattern interrupt? So one thing you could do, so let's say you come in the house at four o'clock, five o'clock when you finish work or whatever, and you're starving, but your dinner's not ready yet. My first thing I would say is not to go straight in the kitchen. If you think about most layouts of house, houses or where we go first, why does it have a word of someone who does this? You know when you get posts and we put it in the kitchen? Why do we do that? Why don't we put it in the living room so we go straight in the living room? That's my first advice to you. Don't go straight into the, into the kitchen. Have something planned for you that makes you feel good and wind down from work, whether that's a walk, whether that's meditation. Have something that interrupts the, the habit of going in the kitchen because I can I'll say now if I was if I was thinking about something stressful my natural thing to do is to walk in the kitchen and put the kettle on even if I, I don't even it's like brushing my teeth I'll just put the kettle on and think yeah a cup of tea I guess now I don't associate that with biscuit and cake but you might so if every time the kettle's on you associate it with a biscuit that's a habit how do you interrupt that pattern so make sure you have something set up, whether that's you're going for a walk, whether that's you're going to ring a friend, whether that's you're going to read. Make it easy to do. Leave the book where you see it straight away. Leave the meditation that you're going to do. So it's set up. You know when you're going to do it. Make sure you know where you're going to do it and really set up. Or is it a workout? You're going to go straight in. You've got your workout, whether it's a home workout or whatever. Set up so it's ready then and there. And I know you might be thinking now, yeah, I know all that already. But still, when it comes to it, I still don't do it. Here's a few things you can do. Number one is tell someone you're going to do it and just let them know. And, and I'll be honest with you, this is why a lot, of, a lot of the ladies find the program so helpful is that they know that we're watching, they're going to check in with us. We'll say, oh, how's things? I always used to, I, I don't do this anymore. I'm more polite. I normally message saying, how's things? But we had a little joke for a while. This was years ago now. When some of the ladies didn't arrive for a session and they said they were, oh, scared me then. <laughs> um, when people didn't arrive for a session, I used to just send them a full stop. Just, and they knew what I meant. Just a full stop was enough. And then they used to go, ah, oh, damn it, Matt. Yeah, I couldn't make it today because. 
just having that accountability sometimes allows someone to do it. And that, that is why, another reason why we're doing our free five day kickstart again. So we did this in lockdown uh, in June and we did one in May as well. This is five days completely free. We, I set you a task every morning. You get a workout, which is 10 minutes a day, 10 minutes. It's completely free. And then we have a live Q and A about it. So you can ask questions in the evening. So you've got that accountability, that task and workout first thing in the morning. Then in the evening, we go over that task, go over the workout, go over any questions that you have to try and adapt it for you. And this is to give you that accountability, that kickstart to kind of get into good habits and also let you see the type of coaching that we do. If you do want to come in on that, click the link above. It's completely free, like I said, five days. All you've got to do is meet me halfway and make sure you, you show up to it and get something from it. Because I'll be there every day, morning, workout, then the Q&A in the evening, every evening for you to ask questions and really delve into nutrition, making it simple, cutting through the overwhelm. This is all from home, by the way, cutting through the overwhelm and really breaking down where you, what your obstacles are, whether it's comfort eating, whether it's stress eating, whether it's that what you only do it when you're tired, balancing it with work, etc. all these things and how to really fit it to your lifestyle. So... Going back to where I was, I only answered one of the questions, to get that accountability, and that's, that's an option for you there. Number two is just to answer this question. This is a question that is actually in our new 28-day Kickstart book as well, which is, if nothing changes, what happens five years from now? If nothing changes, what happens five years from now? Because when you ask that question sometimes, you start to remind yourself that doing nothing doesn't mean nothing changes doing nothing could actually mean that things get worse. I know that sounds a depressing thing to say, but it's important just to be realistic sometimes and actually remind yourself of that. Because sometimes it's just not in our awareness. We think, oh yeah, no, another day won't hurt, another day won't hurt. And that's why I talk about sometimes the power of like even five minute exercise sessions. It's not the significance of the five minutes, but it's the momentum you build. The momentum you, you build on actually doing the exercise. Because it makes it easier four days from now when you do want to do half an hour workout, to actually do it because you've just kept it going. It's not such a big effort. So start small. I actually had a chat with one of the ladies this week. She's got a puppy um, and she's like, oh, I've been hectic this week. I haven't been able to do any of the workouts. Other half's been away, can't leave it on its own, can't take it out for walks, but it's kept her busy. Um, but she said, like, I've been struggling a bit to find the time to do it. And I said, okay, let's just break it down to, to two minute workouts. So rather than having to watch something or do a 10 minute workout where there is an obstacle, whether you think it or not, that the obstacle is pressing play and setting it up, you know, all that. Whereas it's just two minutes. So two minutes of a certain exercise, then she's going to send me her score in that two minutes of that exercise. So she, I know when she's done it. She knows when she's done it. She knows how many she's done. Then it's a bit of a game. Hey, Mary. So I hope that helps. Any questions on that? Do let me know. And let me know if you have used the pattern interrupt before, whether it's reading a book, doing a workout and how you've done it before. Do let me know. Whether it's meditation, find something that you enjoy doing because you'll value it more. Going back to the start of the conversation, I should, I need to. When you say things like that, you just gotta consider whether you're, you just don't value them at the time. And that's why generally the best exercise is the thing that you kind of wanna do at the time or fall in love with the benefits of it. Try and fall in love with the benefits of doing it. Hope that helps. And like I said, if you wanna join our free five day kickstart, it starts a week on Monday. Monday the 19th, I'll open the group on Saturday. There'll be some pre-tasks to do prior to that. So if you have any questions on that, do let me know and speak soon.